Hello, this is Brandon from Level Up Strategies, and this is the second part of our video. We actually just went through this, our Cover Your Password series for personal, uh, and we're jumping into for business right now because there are some complexities around business, uh, namely the addition of commerce. That is just, it's just a distinction and our aim with this series is to help you make some actionable and intelligent decisions around how you manage the information that is important to your business so people can't steal it. Uh, you work hard, your, your privacy matters, and there are some very simple things that you can do to make sure that what you've worked hard for stays protected. There's also some things that you need to make sure you don't do because um, there's some simple don'ts that are often overlooked because they're not apparent to us. We have this balance in life and especially in business around protection and security and then simplicity and convenience. And those two have attention uh, against one another, but um, cybersecurity doesn't have to be scary for it to be effective. Uh, you know, it's not criminals lurking in the darkness. You can do this, uh, it's straightforward. We figured it out uh, to a measure that we're really comfortable with and we have some confidence in. So the big distinction between a personal and business uh, is is there's a, often a commerce as, aspect that can really be lung, uh, lumped into like the documents that you have and hold as an organization. You're often managing other people's documents. Sometimes they're financial information, which is important, which is why it's got to be behind your wall of passwords. It's got to be protected. Doing a quick recap because some of the basic principles apply. You know, the categories of your important information, loosely speaking, so we can have a conversation about it, is documents, financials, social capital, which is like your social media, so on, um, your communications, which is largely your email, uh, maybe even Teams would be in here, uh, Teams, there's, there's a Google meeting, so on, and then commerce, if you're processing people's payments or their private personal information, think medical records and whatnot. So we discovered that you put a big password wall in to protect your information, that's fantastic. I hope you have a password keeper, something that allows you to use complicated passwords, randomized, long, non-sequential passwords. So it's not one, two, three, four. Uh, I used an example where when I was back in the day learning this, I have to fill up passwords. It was Charlie with a capital C and then I needed a number. So it was Charlie one, and then I needed the special character at some time. So it was Charlie one exclamation mark. And that was it. That was my really, cause I figured who's gonna figure that out, come on. I didn't realize that there are computers that do the job of solving the password problems. It's just a math equation in terms of probability that work through it and they solve it. They don't care what it is. They're not thinking or reading or trying to get into your head to remember your favorite dog's name from way back when. It's just a problem and computers are solving those problems these days and they're doing it rather effectively. So you need complicated passwords. It makes it exponentially more complicated for computers to hack in. But as we've discovered that there are holes in your big password system. Even if you have really big randomized passwords, the computer, the pin, you know, you open your computer and you pick your user. It's like, it's you and you go enter your password to get in, is it one, two, three, four? Is it something simple like good morning? If you get that pin, you get access to your computer. If you get access to your computer, you get access to everything on your computer because your computer is often linked to the drive to your email. And as we discovered that if I can get into your email, which is, you know, click on the, the Outlook, the Mac mail, the Gmail icon on your computer, because it assumes you should be in there because you knew the pin as simple as that might've been, well, now I can go to your bank account and then hit forgot password. It'll send me a renewed password link to your, your email address, which is already on your computer. So I just click yes, I wanna reset my password. It'll take me to the screen and I can enter whatever password I want because I already have your login and now I have my own password to your financial information. So the pin on your computer is super critical, but all that same information is also available on your phone because you have your phone with your emails, your Instagram, your Facebook, your bank app, it's all right there too. And how do you get into your phone? Face ID, touch ID, or the four to six digit pin number in case there's a mask on your face and the face ID doesn't register. Which means that the complexity of that phone code, four to six digits, gets you access to all of these 
things. And it was a rude awakening for me personally and in light of my business to think that, you know, I spend, I spend a lot of money a year protecting my infrastructure. I think uh, we're talking hundreds of dollars a month to protect my infrastructure in, in business with uh, clouds and encryptions. And I spend close to that again with uh, password protection because it's a user subscription. So I'm paying money because I care about the strength of this wall. Meanwhile, the six digit phone code blows a hole through all of it. And that phone code is as easy to steal as looking over somebody's shoulder at Starbucks and watching them thumb in the code so they can tap for their coffee and then they go sit down at the thing and they go to the bathroom and somebody can steal their phone and run out the door with access to all of this. So in light of realizing that, we're making this video. Business is really interesting because if you're a sole proprietor of some sort, you can kind of work inside of this, this sphere of using, for example, your Apple iCloud keychain to control your information and it will, it'll work for you. But if you have employees, you need to start to understand that these simple methods of self privacy don't work as far as team privacy, because you need to have free flow of information within your organization so that people can make actionable and intelligent real-time decisions and the wrong kinds of encryption can like lock up your business so people feel like they have handcuffs and they can't do the right work. They also can serve as a safety net to guard against you or somebody in your organization or you making an error in judgment and a case study that I'm remembering is that a friend works at a large engineering firm that's on the front end of some really cool stuff. And uh, they had an intern that was asked to manage their social media. They got some promotional videos on their new products and services, whatever. And they took their social or their YouTube library and they made it live to the whole, whole internet. Not realizing that they also made live the folder with all of the intellectual property for their internal research and development database at the exact same time. That little button, share with the whole wide world wide web. You know, they just they just clicked it. It was just it was so that's an example of a, a situation where a violated or easy to succeed, hard to fail is always the parameters that we need to work with when we're building systems for ourselves, especially if we're building systems that we expect other people to follow. So that YouTube example where the intern like it was easy to succeed, just click the button and upload it, and it was also easy to fail. Because if you click just the wrong button in the folder next to the folder you can blow a hole in all that privacy that the organization's hoping to protect and maintain a competitive advantage, which is why we brought in the segmentation of, we categorize information green, yellow, red, and black, which are rook colors, uh, with green being free flowing, easy access information. Anybody can get it at any time. It's not, if, if you stole information in a green folder or green category information, it would be like pictures of our staff lunch and promotional videos we make public to the internet anyways. Yellow, slightly more, it's private information, but not top secret information. Um, and then red, obviously becoming more, more private. There's things signed contracts, legal documents, employee records, and so on. And black box information is often isolated and super specific people can access in very specific situations, think company records and so on. And this has really helped us easy to succeed, hard to fail because we can give people access to categories of information and exclude categories of information, which means our intern would really probably only have access to green information if they're just an intern. If they're a new employee, maybe green and yellow. If they're management and above, okay, they could, we trust them in the process to manage red. But if you're on the executive team, you get access to black, maybe all the black, maybe half what's in the black. It's just, you can, you can really segment this so people can't accidentally make an error, which is just how so often this stuff happens. People put their post-it notes with their passwords in the thing and the Teams video, you can see their password and login credentials, like those kind of oops, I didn't mean to, accidents do happen. Because in business, we need to build infrastructure that other people can use, <clears throat> which is why I'm a big fan of having an overarching password keeper. <clears throat> we use one password and we're very happy with them. Um, they just, they do a really good job and I can give access to different vaults 
If you joined our organization, I can assign vaults to you. If you're uh, an external contractor, I can share a vault with you. For example, our social media, if we have a graphic designer we bring in, they can get access to a very specific thing, but access to nothing else. And the whole pretense of a password keeper is that you have a very complicated password. <clears throat> and if you have anything less than this, you're actually setting yourself up to fail. Now, the trick is you're going to need to break these links and you're going to need to decide documents, financials, social capital, and communication, commerce, who gets access to what. What I'm here to talk to you about is your infrastructure because um, in our organization, we've gone through the effort of going, okay, we're going to set up our information through this lens and we can segment what access what information you get access to through the drive ecosystem we use the microsoft 365 drive ecosystem very happy with that particularly the exchange server i don't get paid from microsoft to say that they charge me a lot of money for the privilege of using it but i have a lot of confidence in their exchange server to uh to catch malware before it gets into my organization which is the whole point of this short of somebody stealing your literal device off your desk having seen or memorized your pin number they have to come in remotely and i think microsoft does a good job at at least defending the communications email piece so what we've done as an organization is we have made it mandatory that we control as an organization we provide you a computer and a phone and an ipad if required I think most organizations are going to bump into trouble with the phone. And why this is super important is that your phone has a bunch of apps on it. Your personal phone does, your employee's personal phone. And there's a couple of problems. What apps do as far as like spying on you, you can't control. The only thing you can control is what apps are on your phone. So for example, we have like a no social media policy in any of our work phones, not on my personal phone. I just don't trust the, I don't just don't trust my private information with companies that like to spy. That's just how that goes. So uh, you know, shopping apps and so on. If you have a company phone, you can control the apps that are on your phone and the password on it, as well as your, um, the information and how it's transferred. And when your employee off boards, they can give back the phone, they can give back the computer, and you don't have this conflict at the end where your business information is on their personal phone because you never want that. You def definitely want a, a segment. Let's pick a color here, personal. You need to have a hard segment or a separation between personal and business if you're gonna maintain the integrity of this because the point of this system in a, as a, in a business organization is that the information flows freely between the parties who need it so that you can make real-time actionable intelligence. If your employee controls the information through their phone, if they have an old phone or an archaic set of infrastructure, your bottleneck will forever be in their infrastructure and you can't control that because it's their phone and you can't make them go buy a new one. When it's time to update your hardware, you want to be able to update your hardware. So uh, that's a really important distinction. Plus, I guess the cross-pollination is something I'm just I'm just not willing to accept the risks of that. Um, same thing with the computer. Your your ecosystem. I'm going to say you should have the same computers, whether it's Mac or Windows or Google, take your pick. But you should stick with the same ecosystem. So if you got Microsoft, you should have Microsoft. If you got Mac, you should have Mac because the hardware will link with one another for the free flow of information. And again, you can build your, your IT safety net around these things easier if you have the same set of hardware and also the same phone systems. Again, from a training protocol, everybody that's been there for three months knows how to use your iPhone to send photos to, to your employees. But if there's random Google phones, random iPhones and nobody like it just don't create the complexity in your system because the holes in your system there will forever be holes in the system that um, as so long as there are people involved and that's okay because humans are imperfect and they're not supposed to be perfect they're not cogs 
But that's why the importance of building a system is so critical so that people aren't set up to fail and then the business doesn't receive the consequences of that, the people don't receive the consequences of that failure. It's our responsibility to be proactive, which is why we're talking about this. So if you control the phone, you control the apps that are on it, you control the authentication process because you can make sure it's a phone with face ID, you can make sure the six digit password's on there, and uh, so somebody's kids can't get it and download Minecraft and click on the wrong link where it's spying on your stuff. I mean, that's what we're trying to avoid here. I don't think most people are out there trying to do bad things, but um, accidents can happen. So the complicated password with the password keeper is definitely worth it. You're going to end up feeling or experiencing vulnerability in your emails because so much information is sent through email that if you don't have a, a good cloud overseer i'm going to call it overseer because your emails are audited as they flow through your system and you can set up permissions and controls with the right ecosystem where uh and i did this i'm handling my dad's estate so i sent an email out to my accountant because we're doing his final tax thing i've never done this before and so i had to send i sent a document fill it out and my my dad's social insurance number and i sent it to my accountant and my, i got a flag email back from our server that said this violates the policy within your organization there was an email sent out with somebody's social insurance number and which was a beautiful example for me of how our system the overseer of our system and the way we set up our policies was to try to protect people's personal information because we never want to be in a situation where data leaks occur and because that just it just breaks trust in the world of our our business environment so it's like wow it's working you know we don't deal in social insurance numbers we're a contractor and consulting company so it's like we don't email social insurance numbers and but in this case it was on my computer to my email inbox to my accountant which is a work relate because he's our corporate accountant which is what I'm like there you go so the overseer if you have a if you have the right measures in place and you're gonna have to pay for this this you know Google's not gonna offer it for free and that's okay, and Microsoft is where we go because I just think they're the most robust and comprehensive, and that's just the way it is. Even though we use Mac hardware, we use Microsoft software, and you can you can make it so that the information that you don't want to have shares shared has roadblocks, and you can make it so that the the really important stuff, the you know the greens and the yellows and 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 the red should be able to flow pretty easily within your organization. Um, but obviously, like personal information, that would have been a, a black box sort of thing. It's why it was flagged. So it's an example for me of how the system that we've set up over the last four years has really worked for us. Why? Because it guards our protection or guards our our interests going forward because this is preventative. Uh, and a lot, of, a lot of the cyber infrastructure um, is like a preventative maintenance thing for us. I, I, I put the analogy because I want to really... We want to really come at this from a different spirit than so many like almost doom and gloom cybersecurity consultants. You don't need to be afraid. In the same way that when a football player goes on to the onto the field, they put their helmet and they put their padding on. Not because they're afraid, but because when they're padded up, they can play hard and play long. And you know, they can just have a long career if they if they take care of themselves and put the right protection in the right place but you know with enough breathability around their face so they can still see and make those great plays like there's a there's a there's a sense of we can put our protection on for endurance sake not for i'm afraid don't hurt me sake and we're definitely on the we want to play for a long time and um and this is just how we're going to do it so that's that. I think we um, the computer piece it really builds on a lot of this because you're managing a lot of information flow. This is the critical piece that I think ties in for businesses. Again, as a personal, you might be using a Shaw, Hotmail, Yahoo, iCloud account. Um, I would spend a lot more attention on this, especially the recovery. And I'm saying this in business, like I have my business email account, but my recovery in case I get locked out of my business is my personal Gmail account which didn't get any attention from me because it was like, ah, oh, it's the free personal Gmail account. And then I realized that if I get locked out of this, it resets to my personal as a backup, just in case this, which meant that the, protect, the, the security around my personal email was really the total security of my business email too. 
because if you forgot the password in this, you could click to reset it, and then you could click the reset in there, and it would go. I'm like, oh golly. So with a couple of basic principles um, of having a sufficient set of passwords and uncoupling things like your iPhone code from your business financials uh, or Face ID from your business financials or the Touch ID on your computer from your classified business documents where you actually have to go through the work of signing in and yes, go through the work of having multi-factor authentication for your critical stuff. If, it, if it's worth protecting, it's worth the extra step because it puts safeguards in place to keep you in business for a long time. This discussion, I mean, we've, I think we're four or five years into curating this right now. Um, and we're just gonna keep going and keep getting better. This has worked so well for us. We haven't had any, any problems from an operational standpoint, you know, with employees moving through our information or getting locked out of things. Um, and I know there's probably questions that are gonna come up like, yeah, but what about my situation? What I hope is that these are guiding principles that helps you make, well, should I, but the phones are cheaper if I do the, I, I would say, do the, spend the money where it matters. And we live in an information age and the information you hold in your company is really the substance of your company. It's the free flow of information is the substance of the commerce that you're involved in. Just treat it as it's important. And uh, I think you're gonna be set up well in the future. So. I'll leave it there, um, and I guess there'll be questions and comments, and we can discuss those more in the future. But until then, all the best.